Hey guys, this is your boy Kirk Bears, and welcome to the Prime Review. So, I have the perfect tagline for this year's Premier League. What here? Yeah. Yeah, thought you did. It would. It is simple, he put. If you are a betting man, this is the best year to make a shit ton of fucking money from the Prem League. Fixtures. Seriously, bound the underdog, they're gonna win! Mm -mm. Anyway, let's get into the results, shall we? He, he, and let's start. I would like to start at St. James's Park, but we'll get to that. At, I'll do the Saturday matches first. First and because I like to live them in semi-order. Sometimes they're random though. Because reasons. Anyway, let's start at the Britannia. What happened at the Britannia? And they lost 2-0 to Stoke. And quite frankly, it should have been more. Stoke dominated. See. So. Let me eat. See if I can hmm, figure this out. Who wants to win the Premier League this season? It, it seems to be only Leicester. It seems to be only Leicester. Because Chelsea aren't going to win it. Liverpool aren't going to win it. Especially in, not if we keep losing hmm, games we should be winning. Arsenal aren't going to win it unless they sign him in striker who's going to score from enough goals to win it. it and many United are just too boring. It's the true fan how live with it. I'll get to those teams in just a minute. I'll tell you why. None of them are going to win the league. So it does seem like it's Leicester's to lose. And I never in a million years thought I'd say that. Probably throw cheeky terror on Leicester to win the league. Eek. Why not? Fucking rich in May. You look fucking stupid, but. <laughs> stupid, they're fucking top of the fucking table. But yeah, Man City lost 2 0 to Stoke. Should have been more. Man City, they don't want to win the league. They really don't. And from one team who don't want to win the league to a team that probably do, but don't have what it is needed. Arsenal, who beat Sunderland 3-1. One of the only teams in the top four to win this weekend was Arsenal and Leicester. All the others are lost or drew. Huh? <laughs> the fuck? But, look, Arsenal, you know, 3-1 against Sunland. Decent results. Arsenal fans saying, yeah, we beat Sunland 3-1. We can easily win this league. No. No, you, 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 you know, so, it was, hey, it's, it's just Sunderland, and, you know, there's a difference between being Sunderland and winning the league, you know, if that result had won Arsenal the league, we'd all be saying congratulations to Arsenal, but it's December, and not May, so we're not doing that yet, <laughs> plus, if it were May, Leicester would be champions because they're two points ahead of us. Besides the point. Arsenal are not going to win the league with Olivia Giroud as the, her best striker. It's just not going to happen. You need a world class striker who is going to bag you who, who 20 plus goals. This has been Arsenal's main problem since Thierry Henry left. 
And as much as I hate that low life French cunt, and at least he could score goals. goals. Arsenal don't have that anymore. They need that if they're going to win the league. Win the FA Cup is completely different. And the FA Cup is a winnable trophy with someone like Olivier Giroud up front. How do I know? Arsenal have won it the last two seasons. And are probably one of the favorites to win it this season if they can stop getting all their players injured or beforehand. But Wenger, if he really wants to win the league this season, he has got to go out in January and sign a big name striker. Now they're being linked with Ibra. That's the sorry to burst your bubble of Arsenal, but I don't think Ibra is coming. Just he's just one of those players that'll never play in the Prem. Just one of those players. So yeah, look, I'd uh, you probably plus you know Ibra's gonna would bag lots of goals. And he probably would sue Arsenal. Oh, oh, because, you know, Arsenal have pacey wingers like Theo Walcott and Chamberlain and Sanchez is, who could run down the wings and get the service into Ibra. Uh, uh, and he can nut it down into the back of the net because he's, you know, Ibra. But would Ibra join Arsenal? I, ca I can't see him leaving PSG he, he, unless it's to retire. I, I I don't really see it. So, yeah. 3 1 over Sunderland. Does that give Arsenal a chance to win the league? Yes. Will they? Not right now. If. If, I, if you ask me to, to predict who's going to win the league right now, I'd say Leicester. I really, in fact, I'm actually saying Leicester. Right now, Leicester are going to win the league. Anyway, from mm, mm, a team who strikers, who need a striker, to a team that just needs someone to score a fucking goal. Manchester United, it drew nil-nil with West Ham United. Can I have those m m moment, minutes of my life back? Seriously. That was such a waste of my time to watch the highlights of that match. It was so boring. There was few shots. It's, there were no goals. It was a typical Louis van Gaal performance. And... and some idiots think Van Gaal can win the title. He hasn't got a fucking hope. Do you know what wins titles? Goals. Van Gaal does not score those. Those. He is the master of the nil-nil draw. He's probably had more nil-nil draws this season than any other her manager in the history of the Premier League. And that is a lot of fucking managers. Hers. Hers. Instead of Louis Van Gaal, let's just call him Nil Nil. I think he'd like that. That's, it would suit him better. Anyway, from a team who can't score to a team who just don't want to lose. In fact, both teams in this next match didn't want to really lose because Villa, getting kind of sick of doing that in the league, and Southampton were just off that 6-1 trash in to Liverpool, who I'll get onto in a minute. But let's talk about the Saints versus Villa. One all. Um, if I'm being honest, that was a better result for Villa. I really think that was a better so result for Villa because it's not a loss and uh, it's a point. Although Newcastle won, so you know, disappointing for Aston Villa. 
And it's like, we got a point! Oh, Newcastle beat Liverpool. So yeah, 1-1. One, one. Pretty simple. Or some re of the match, to be honest. And we come to Leicester and Swansea. Or as Leicester should be renamed, Vardy and Morris. Because those are the only two who really do anything. The others are just, are just there to make up the numbers, to be honest. Because without Morris and Vardy, do not even kid yourself, Leicester. You'd be nowhere near the top. So ride this train for as long as it will for as far as it'll go because one of two things will happen either Vardy and Mara actually one of three team things one of three possibilities could happen one Vardy and Mara Vardy and Marty Vardy and Mares will either drop in form that's one option. That's one possibility. Two. They'll be sold in January. He. Father's been linked with Gary Neville at Valencia. Ah, so don't cod yourself and say, ah, oh, no one's interested in Vardy. Yes, they are. Or three. One of them, maybe even both, will get injured. Or, the fourth option that I just thought of, which is, you win the league. Pretty simple options there are, Leicester. I think all Leicester fans watching this would be like, option four there, Corey. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs> uh, I'm so convinced they're just happy to be up there. But, if they win the league... To him. Hmm. It'll be, uh. Yeah. Anyway, let's go from teams who are doing unbelievably well to teams who are just. Yeah, you know, they're doing better than people expected them to. But, you know, they're not doing too well, but they're not doing too badly. It's, it's, it's okay. Things are good for both these teams. Well, more so for Watford, because Watford beat Norwich 2-0. And to sum up this match would be to say Watford took one step closer to securing... Premier League football next season and it helps when the teams around you are doing very badly except Newcastle who, who did very very well like I said we'll get to them We're almost there there's only two more games on Saturday and we come f to West Brom who held another North London club to a draw oh, they're getting really good at this they beat Arsenal, and now they've taken two points off of Spurs. If Liverpool's results had been any different, I'd be saying thank you, West Brom. But considering Liverpool's results, I'd have to say... Ah! So yeah, 1-0, good result for West Brom. Bad result for Spurs, but good considering no one made ground on them. And then we come to the match where it, it's just gone to rat shit if your name is Jose Mourinho. And this was the only upside to the whole weekend. <laughs> yeah, that's how bad this weekend was. And it was my birthday on Saturday, believe it or not. So yeah, bad weekend. Very, very bad. But on the upside, 
Jose Mourinho lost again. He lost 1-0 to Bournemouth. I, I think it's time. I think it's time that we consider Chelsea relegation fires. Because there is literally only three points between them and Newcastle. That's one match. That is one more fuck up, and Chelsea could find themselves in the bottom three. E, e, and the way Chelsea are playing, if they go in, they're not gonna come out. We may actually see Chelsea, the Premier League champions, get relegated. So, what's the solution? I don't know. I really don't. Can Chelsea buy a whole new team and get a new manager in by the next game? Hmm. Considering the window is closed, so they can't get a whole new team. Well, I only leaves one option. The manager. Jose must go. He's been given chance after chance after chance after chance and this season it's just not happening. And as the defending Premier League champions you can't have this bad of a season and keep your job. It's just not gonna happen. Jose will lose his job and if Roman Abramovich is smart he will have Jose gone by the time Chelsea play in next weekend. And speaking of of bad performances from teams, we come to what happened at St James's Park. So let's run down what happened, shall we? Roberto Firmino had the worst performance he's had in a Liverpool shirt. Okay, you know. Okay, that's that's understandable, you know. He he's new to the team. He didn't have his friend Coutinho there. Maybe was a doubt true injury. I think he was fit and he's just not being risked because of all the Christmas games coming up, so Klopp is obviously thinking, right, don't all want Coutinho to play all those games. And if I bring him back too soon, he might get injured again. So, okay, fair enough. Christian Manteke. I'm going to kill you. I'm going to kill you. How? 32 and a half million. Villa are better off without you. They are actually better off without you. And they're bottom of the fucking table. Oh. Oh. They wouldn't be anywhere. They would still be bottom of the table. If they still had you. Because you, you can't score. Seriously. How are you an actual striker? 32 and a half million. Brendan Rodgers is coming back to haunt us and he's fucking gone! This January transfer window cannot open soon enough. Klopp needs to get in his own players so he can stop playing with the Brendan Rodgers shit! Like a Christian Benteke! He... He... And Simon Mignolet! He... He... Now, the first goal! Oh, credit! It has to be he given the skirt off. He tried his best to prevent that goal. He just got extremely unlucky. And the and the second goal Genie Wynaldum showed why they call him Genie. He was very good. He was good throughout the whole game to be honest. It just looked like Newcastle wanted it more. From the first whistle 
I was thinking, we haven't got a fucking hope. I was looking at it and I could see from the way the players were playing, Liverpool looked like they didn't give a fucking shit. It, it didn't help that we had a player who, who had his worst game for us yet, and a player who can't fucking score. Her, her. Plus, we had the worst, we had the worst keeper in in football history in goal. Oh, the only upside for Liverpool is we scored a goal. Oh wait, it was disallowed for some fucking reason. Hmm. Hmm. Sky Sports. I'm gonna give you guys a little. Okay. Go on to YouTube. Type into the search bar the true Geordie. He is a Newcastle supporter. Uh, a very he won on the on Newcastle sport here on YouTube. Go watch his react his his review of this match. He said it a Newcastle fan. In fact every Newcastle fan I've talked to in the past day he has told me he, that Moreno goal was a goal. It was not offside. It was not offside. In the end, it would have been pointless because Genie Wijnaldum would have still scored that second goal oh, and still won the match for Newcastle, but it still would have made the scoreline look somewhat decent. But 2 0. We lost 2 0. We lost fucking 2 0. Oh, and I don't understand why did I mean I want I want to believe that Jurgen had a good reason for playing Christian Benteke I mean I can understand not playing Sturge but why the fuck didn't you play Divock Origi the kid just scored a fucking hat trick against Southampton in his first team and you play Christian Benteke who couldn't score a hatch for us as if we he blew up the fucking keeper or, or and the defense he'd still fucking miss what needs to happen is Jurgen just don't play Christian until January sell that fucker in January he, he, I'm sure Villa will welcome him back because they can actually use him he is not our kind of player or you can get in your own players, players, players and we can recover from this it's, it's not too late it's one defeat it, and the next game we'll be back on track heck, heck, because hopefully you will learn your lesson and that lesson is do not play Christian Benteke just don't do it, it. he's fine as an impact sub but a starting striker he's not a starting striker. Don't play him as a starting striker anymore. <sighs> the only upside is that it is aside from Arsenal and Leicester, all the other teams around Liverpool fucked up. And that leads us very nicely to the game that happened tonight between Everton and Crystal Palace. A Scott Danton goal gave Crystal Palace the lead late on, but a few minutes later, Roman Lukaku equalised 1-0. Oh. Yeah. That was a fucking shit weekend. And hopefully next weekend will be much better and Liverpool will get back to winning ways. He's one can only fucking hope. Jurgen Klopp has learned his lesson and he won't play Christian Benteke as a starting striker uh, again and he'll sell that useless Belgian cunt in, in January. Hey, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. I'll see you all soon. Peace.